What's up guys, it's Kayla and Jim. Welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. discussing today. Today we're going to discuss the Farmer's Almanac 2023 spring prediction for the United States. And we've already done one for the winter 2022-2023 season for the United States. We've done that in an earlier video and Ed and Kayla is going to link the description down below. So you can check that out. That goes into more details. It does, yes. So yes. we are planning for this particular video not to go in depth like we did for that one because that kind of set the basis for the Farmer's Almanac and stuff. Right. Here we're just going to pick it up three months later and look at the spring prediction. What are we looking at for spring? Um, also, disclaimer, if I sound a little funny in this video, it is because North Carolina decided it was already going to be spring and the allergies have <laughs> bestowed upon me a stuffy nose. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we took the clothespin off earlier, but she still sounds the same. So uh, I don't know. So bear with me in this video. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the Farmer's Almanac's prediction for the mm -hmm. U.S. in spring 2023. Will winter hold on? Will spring make its normal arrival? Will it arrive early? As well as one very interesting note that they talked Ooh. about, and we will get into that soon. But before we get started, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up if you are enjoying it along the way, as well as subscribing down below. As of this time, we are about to hit 5,000 subscribers, wow. which is about 4,999 more <laughs> subscribers than we ever thought we would get. So thank you guys so much for watching our videos and subscribing and commenting and interacting and messaging us on Instagram. Yes. And it has been amazing. So if you are watching this currently and you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Join the Mediatek Weather family, hit the subscribe button and join the conversation. Okay, editing Kayla is gonna pop up an image from the Farmer's Almanac Spring Outlook, and we're gonna take a look at it, and I'm gonna read to you what they put in their post. According to our long range outlook, temperatures will be slow to warm. In fact, around the time of the vernal equinox, unseasonably cold temperatures may be gripping many parts of the country, extending the shiver and shovel portion of our outlook. We are predicting a soggy, shivery spring ahead. Overall, we see a wet, and cool season for most places, with spring taking its sweet time to arrive. The exceptions will be in the far west with near normal temperatures over Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, as well as the southwest, where you'll see quickly rising temperatures. Snow will continue to be mentioned in early April for the Great Lakes. Spring will be unusually active over the nation's heartland with frequent heavy to severe thunderstorms predicted. Such adverse activity will be confined chiefly to the southeast states during March, then will spread north and west April through June. The most frequent and devastating tornado events tend to occur in the region of the U.S. colloquially referred to as Tornado Alley. This region generally runs from the Dakotas south to Texas, although in 2023 we find this active zone shifting somewhat to the east and encompassing the Ohio, Tennessee, and Mississippi River Valleys. So like Kayla was saying earlier, her allergies and everything have been kicking up. North Carolina, we've really had a lot of temperature swings recently. We've got spring and then we fall back into winter and now it's become spring again. And I think we're forecast to go back into winter this weekend. I so think, I think I saw some snow flurry <laughs> emojis <laughs> on my weather app yeah. for sometime later this week. So the Southeast doesn't know what it's doing. No, but you know, it, it is springtime in the US and with seasonal patterns changing it does happen we're coming out of la nina going into a neutral pattern yes. and then eventually transitioning to an el nino phase so we're looking to see what's going to happen and very curious you'll have to stick around because we're going to be talking about the summer forecast and how is it going to impact hurricane activity too so yeah that's down the road you've got road. a little bit of time let's <laughs> deal with the allergies first <laughs> and something that this said 
happens to be um, a potential for some twisting storms mm. in areas that maybe don't usually get uh, right. as much of the, the activity. So let's dive into what it was talking about there. That's right. Side note, if you don't know what El Nino or La Nina is and was kind of confused by what we were just talking about, we just made a video a couple weeks ago explaining all of that and it'll pop up in one of these corners. If you want to go check that out and uh, join us back here when you're done with that one. So let's talk about how the severe weather zone was shifting uh, for the spring season to the Ohio, Tennessee, and Mississippi River Valleys. Mm -hmm. So typically you would have in February and March down in the deep south of the U.S., you know, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, uh, Louisiana, down in there, uh, you'd have severe weather that would break out in this time period and then the focus would start shifting as the jet would lift further north and then shift further west when you get into April and June and you have your typical tornado alley activity from the Dakota South. Texas. But here they actually pointed out the Ohio, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and Mississippi valleys for severe weather. Yeah. So is it going to be more than what is typical, let's right. say? And that's kind of the wording I'm getting from this. Yeah, from that's what I'm reading from this as well, is they're expecting severe weather to happen more towards the east than over traditional Tornado Alley. We'll have to see, as we are now into March, Yep. this is the, the next three month period, yes. so the spring outlook is March, April, May, and so we'll see how things develop in that zone yep. and keep our eyes out and then look to see come April and May as things start to shift further west. So for us, for us chasers that are along the east coast and over the Ohio, Tennessee, and Mississippi river valleys, we'll have a better chance of capturing severe weather events and being able to post them here. Exactly. Yeah, we might not need to make the trek all the way out into Tornado <laughs> Alley this year. If this is correct, we might even just have to go one state over. That's right. So we'll see. We'll see. Let's see what happens. Again, this is the Farmer's Almanac spring prediction. This is not uh, NOAA, the National Weather Service, anything like that. We're not diving into what their forecasts are at all. This is just the Farmer's Almanac. And they do have algorithms and things that they use. Mm -hmm. They have been very reliable in the past. True. And again, like I said before, we're going to do a comparison later this year on how the winter season went and what their predictions were. Right. And um, so we'll see. We'll see how this spring turns out and if that severe weather zone actually shifted east. So now let's throw it to you guys. Did you guys see what the Farmer's Almanac was predicting for your area for winter? Did it come true? They had some funny things like pigs picking up sticks and all that stuff. Was that happening in your area? Did you get as much snow and cold weather as the Farmer's Almanac was predicting or was it wrong? And how do you think that this coming spring season for the US is going to turn out? Is it going to be like they're saying or is it going to maybe be like, ah, you're wrong for the winter. Should we believe you for the spring? <laughs> Let us know what your experience was this past winter. Again, all of the links for everything will be down in the description if you want to check out any of the videos that we were talking about or read the Farmer's Almanac spring prediction for yourself. Down there you will also find the links to our School of Weather if you are interested in learning about the basics of meteorology and the topics that are covered in a college level introduction to atmospheric sciences course. Go ahead and check those out. We've got two tiers so far. I believe there's 10 or 11 videos total and it dives into, you know, oh, what is a thunderstorm? What is wind? How does it affect thunderstorms? How do tornadoes form? How do hurricanes form? And all the fun stuff like that while not going too scientific. So it's great for all ages. If you want to check that out, it's down in the description next to our website and all the links to our social media, Facebook and Instagram. Check us out over there. And again, make sure you're subscribed. We're so close to 5,000. If we oh. could hit it this month, that'd be awesome. It's a bit of a stretch, but <laughs> you know, we're, we shoot for the moon. And if you land, right. I don't know, somewhere else on earth, I don't remember what the saying is, but. <laughs> <laughs> shoot for the stars. And if you hit the moon, look at that. You got to the moon, so. I like his better. <laughs> Let's shoot high for the stars. Uh, tomorrow we're going to hit 5,000 subscribers. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, PewDiePie. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's it for the video today. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you at the next Meteorology Monday. <laughs>